Hey guys, what's up? It's Apollo here. I hope you guys are doing well and welcome back to another glorious Napoleon Total War online battle. This one is very tactical, very exciting. I know you're going to enjoy it from start to finish. But before we get started with this bloody battle, I just wanted to say that this video is sponsored by Vikings. So Vikings War of Clans was inspired by the famous strategy and RPG games of the late 90s and early 2000s like Rise of Nations, Empire Earth, and Age of Empires, all those classics. So what makes Vikings so addictive is that there are more than 20 million online players who are constantly changing the way the game evolves by never ending fighting over resources, forging new alliances, and competing in live events. And another cool thing is that Vikings is holding a contest in which you can win four drones. So they have three Spark DJI drones uh, for $400 to those who reach the 10th level. And they have one Phantom drone for $800 to those who reach the highest level in the game. So the contest will be held on Friday the 5th of October in the Instagram on the Vikings page using a randomizer. So there's a link to their Instagram down in the video description. So you can support my channel by downloading the game for free using my links in the video description down below. Uh, so if you use this link, you will get 200 gold coins, which you can use right away. And you'll also get a protective shield. Uh, so thank you guys so much for uh, checking out the link and supporting the channel. And now we can get started with the Napoleon battle. Alright guys, here we are on the battlefield. Really excited about this one. You can see artillery is already firing, firing at the Prussians. I'm really excited about this one because the person who sent in this battle replay has sent in battle replays before that were really, really excellent. He's actually the guy, or one of the guys, who works for Oasis Hosting, which I am partnered with. Uh, so again, uh, down below, definitely check out Oasis Hosting. They've got servers for a wide variety of different games. There's a link to that as well uh, to get a discount code on any purchase on their website. So please show them some love. It's really cool that they actually are, you know, the guys are sending me replays. That's just awesome. I really appreciate that. And uh, it's, it's just a great partnership. So again, guys, please show them some support. Check out their website and check out some of their servers that they've got. Uh, for a wide variety of games. All right, so let's get started with the army comms. So we got a nice matchup here uh, between the French and the Prussians. We got this really cool hill map, um, which is going to create for some very interesting tactics because most of the time, players will not go into the center. Now, the Prussians do have some forces that are taking the, uh, the sneaky maneuver. He's got about three units. I think two are musketeers and one are... Uh, one unit is the Prussian Fusiliers, or they are the Prussian Fusiliers. So they're going to be crossing here and trying to get the French by surprise. But the French also have some rear guard as well. He's got some young guard. Uh, and then, of course, he's got his uh, six-inch howitzer shelling that those forces. So the French are well aware of that sneaky tactic. So it's going to be interesting to see how the French deal with that. So on this on this side, we've got some Voltigeurs. Uh, Volti, Voltigeurs. Uh, so about three units of them. I think they're possibly setting up some stakes. Yeah, they're setting up some stakes. So that, that's going to prevent any kind of frontal cab charge, which is a smart move there. He doesn't have a lot of infantry supporting them. Maybe they're hidden. Maybe he's just not close enough. Uh, but yeah, more and more of these forces, uh, Prussian forces, are going to be pushing forward. He's got Musketeers, Jaeger. Uh, he's got more Jaeger over here. He's got a decent amount of cab. And he is rushing forward some six-pounder horse artillery. Now, I, another thing I wanted to mention here, guys... Is I know this is back playing vanilla. I do enjoy vanilla. It's a lot different from NTW3. Uh, but I want to mention that uh, NTW3 has released a new patch, uh, version 8, which includes a ton of unique units, factions, and stuff like that. So definitely check that out as well. Uh, so I'm just telling you guys to check out so many things, you know. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I can get some version 8 battles of NTW3 out as soon as possible. Uh, so the forces are still making their way. Um, the Prussian Fusiliers and Musketeers charging, leading the way. 
If I was the Prussians, I honestly would wait here because the French are well, you know, they're well aware of the situation going on here. So usually when that happens for me in a total war game where I have like a flanking force and they're caught out or they're spotted, I just wait and try to get the French player to kind of forget about it, which happens, you you might think it's crazy, like, oh, how is he going to forget about that, you know, like, he knows those forces are outflanking him, well, sometimes players get tunnel vision, sometimes they get so focused on other things that are going on in the battle that they kind of forget, or it's not really that they forget, it's just they're managing so much that they kind of kind of you know just don't focus on that side and then before you know it they're getting charged by the infantry and you're losing troops uh, so that's usually what I do when I have a, a sneaky unit get caught out I just wait or even just go back and just be like you know what it's not gonna work out I'm gonna rejoin this troop with the rest of the forces uh, so we had a nice little skirmish going on between the two forces the Voltigeurs looks like they were getting the first one the first volley in uh, and I think they did a considerable amount of damage. Maybe, no, maybe not. Maybe just popping some warning shots here and there. But the Prussians are still uh, just kind of making their way uh, up this hilltop. And, uh, you know, basically setting up their, their forces, trying to get them in position. And then I expect the Prussians to push. Maybe the French will push. But actually, look at this. My God, the Prussians are going in. And we actually have a glorious bayonet charge where he's charging some Voltigeurs. What, what, are, what is the French player doing? I'm not really sure. I mean, he knew this was coming. He knew this was coming. Again, maybe he had the tunnel vision. Oh, and some artillery is firing as well. And the Voltigeurs, Voltigeurs are trying to get out of there as soon as possible. The French artillery trying to give them support. And I think we've got some Prussian Fusiliers lining up, maybe trying to get some pop shots. But this place is so heavy, uh, so heavy, like it's a thick forest, so it's going to be hard to land any shots here. And the Voltigeur is actually turning back into the fight to take on the rest of these Musketeers. It's certainly going to be a losing battle. Oh, and the friendly fire. He hits his own unit, and it causes his men to rout. Wow, that's the risk of... Uh, using that artillery uh, to uh, you know near such near allies. God, words are hard. Damn. Uh, but he's got the guard chasseur a cheval. Uh, so they are chasseur a cheval. Uh, so they are pushing forward, and he's got. A, it seems like he's got a lot of hidden units over here. He's also got the young guard back here, which we saw earlier. But a nice move by the Prussians, and it's really causing some pressure on the back lines of the French army. And he's still moving up. He's not afraid of no artillery. These are some bold musketeers from the Prussians. But they're actually going to head back here. Maybe use this slight slope here in the terrain to protect his men from the enemy artillery. Oh, the canister shot has been activated. Woo. The young guard need to quickly get back up here with his artillery. I Honestly, the French, in my opinion, I think they need to... Group up around this artillery. Make the artillery the centerpiece of this back defense. Because that canister shot... I mean, what are three units of line infantry going to do against cav, line, and artillery? So we'll see. Maybe the Prussians are going to take it slow here. The morale is going down a bit. But I don't think they're losing too many troops. Let's go back over to the top here. Let's see what's going on. Okay, we do have a little bit of a skirmish. Uh, the Prussians are using their cannon fodder. Lose, using some land there. Uh, but it, it seems like he's not quite ready to lose these guys just yet. So he's going to send them back. Uh, also, he's got two chevrons on these guys. Uh, which is going to really help their morale. You know, that nice experience. So, I, I still think he's using them as cannon fodder. Uh, because they are land there. But we'll see how that uh, turns out. He also has a sneaky unit of lancers over here. So, yeah, Prussia really... I love what Prussia's doing here. Prussia's really stretching out his forces. Uh, really just looking for as many opportunities as he can find to um, surprise attack and weaken the French army. Because the French are definitely taking a more defensive uh, maneuver. Again, I don't know what he's doing with this young guard. I don't know why he's got them between the Prussians. Prussians can easily swing around on both sides and attack these French. Now we have the cab moving in. Uh, we got the Garde Chasseur a Cheval, uh, who could get a good... Oh, nice little volley. Love that. Um, love the... I love the, uh, you know, the mounted rifles. Well, let's see if he's going to charge in. 
which it looks like he is going to fully commit into the forest here. The forest is going to make it kind of difficult for them uh, to charge through the trees, but it seems like they are doing a pretty good job. Here we go, artillery firing, and the Prussians are actually falling back. Ah, interesting maneuver there. I think personally I would have held my ground, but I think he's going back to the safety of the two line infantry. Artillery hits a good, good hit there. Gets a good hit. Uh, but yeah, he's going to fall back to the safety of his line, regroup his troops. And even if the Prussians don't achieve a lot here, he's already achieving one thing. And that's causing the French to, to micro constantly and to always second guess. To always, always, he's basically keeping the French player guessing, you know, and keeping him on his toes while this main fight is going on. But I think he's just waiting for the perfect opportunity here. Let me go ahead and turn on this mini-map. The perfect opportunity to charge the Lancers down and kill some of these um, these uh, Voltigers. He does have some Polish Legion over here. So he does have some line support helping. Oh, and some Swiss foot and some guard seamen. So yeah, definitely he's got a nice reinforcing line of line infantry supporting the skirmishers. So a smart move by the French there. It's going to make it very difficult for the uh, Prussians to make a move here. So yeah, definitely French being defensive. And here we go. We got another cab charge. This one might be a little bit more risky uh, because he, I'm sure he can form square. Let's see if he's... Yes, he's going to form square. And that's going to cause the cab to be almost useless. Now he's going to fire. He's got to quickly break these lancers, though, because the young guard are closing in as well. Oh, I love that. I love that music. Oh, the other cav unit going in as well. So he's being very, very reckless with his cav. He's got to get him out of there. It's a, you know, I've seen that maneuver before where you basically force the enemy line infantry to form square. So what you do is you have a line troop like this ready to go. You charge in your cav. They form square, form square, and as soon as they do, you retreat, and your line infantry should be able to chew them up because they're not as effective in a line battle in square formation, unless they're surrounded. If you're surrounded, then form square because you can find them multiple angles. Uh, but yeah, that's a pretty good move. I don't know why the French are falling back here though. I think he, had, I thought he had them in a pretty good spot. The artillery is making this really tough for the Prussians. You know, with that artillery, it's kind of causing the Prussians to have to make a move. See, he's also got... Is he sending Cav over? Yeah, he's got some Lancers on their way. They're very far away, though. So I don't know if they're going to be able to get there in time to support this battle. Nice little volley in the backs of the Young Guard. And now he's... Hey, hey he's, he's pursuing them. He's not going to let up. He's now leaving the, the protection of the forest... Now let's see what else is going. I think it's still just a stalemate over here because of all the action that's going on down here. Here we go. He's going to form up. Let's see if he can get a couple shots here. We got another line. We got young, two units of young guard over here. And the general's making his way. He's really concerned about uh, this side of the battle. Let's see what the Prussians can do here. I, I really like seeing this because you're seeing the Prussians have to be very creative because they are not only outnumbered, probably outmatched in terms of skill of these units. The young guard, very good. Also, the French have more of a diverse force of artillery, line infantry, and cav, meaning that they are more capable of, of doing things like, you know, more versatile tactics. Uh, but the Prussians mostly shooting in the dirt here. You might just want to hold fire, reposition. Uh, we do have another cav force going into the trees. I think he's going to try to harass the Prussian Fusiliers as much as possible. But hey, let's not forget about the Prussian cav, the Lancers. They're still trying to make their way. I think he's going for the artillery. Uh, but I don't know. It's, it's being defended quite well by the young guard. Yeah, two units of young guard. The Prussian Fusiliers trying to pick off this cav. Cav has lost about nine units. Still nothing going on on the other side of the battle, so we're going to stay here. Ooh, the Cav has taken a big hit there. The morale has uh, dropped there a bit. Only losing about six guys. Let's see. He's going in for the charge. Oh, no. Let's see. The French are... Oh, the French probably should have moved their unit a little bit closer. And they're actually going to be able to pull off this charge, guys. Let's see if they have enough to stay in the fight. 
and break the artillery crew. This is going to be a huge help. So a very, very good charge there. He needs to keep moving. Try to keep these cav units alive and don't prevent... If they break here, no! Ah, man, so close. I was worried about that because I was saying if he, if he breaks there, he probably won't get them back. Uh, but now we've got more cav moving in as well. The Chasseur Cheval pushing in. Using their, their rifles, harassing the Prussian Fusiliers who I assume cannot use square uh, so they might break this cab unit now we have the line infantry headed over to the other side trying to quickly save his prussian fusiliers but unfortunately they're breaking as well and it looks like this prussian attack you know i think he's gotten i think it's a fairly even fight here uh you know he's lost a lot of units but he did take out that french artillery which i think could be huge in the long game uh, but we'll see how this progresses. I mean, I think the Prussians definitely have gotten their, their money's worth with this flanking maneuver. Because he took out the artillery. He did take out a cav. And it looks like he's about to take out another cav unit. Which is a very good unit that he's taking out here. Uh, he's softening up the young guard. And he might actually pull out a victory here. If he can break this cav, which they just don't want to break... Come on. See, he's going to form square. He's falling back. Come on. Break the calf. He's going to fall back into the trees. Into the shadows. <laughs> so that was... I mean, so far, he's doing everything right. I just love the fact that he's just... He's just keeping these guys in the game. Oh, this is silly. These guys should... Come on. Take them out. Fire! Oh. Should be strong enough to hold. T there we go. They break the cav. So that's one less cav unit they have to worry about. And now the French, I'm sure they feel like they've got the Prussians on the run. And they're now pursuing them. The French also have the high ground, which is going to be huge. Still back over here. Things are all quiet on the western front. Uh, up here, the cav, I believe, has moved even further down the flank. Again, searching for an opportunity to flank these guys. But I think the French are well aware of it. That's why they've got some Lancers of their own protecting this side of their army. So let's go back over here. Let's see how this is progressing. Yeah, I think that's going to be the last of the Prussians here. But again, I think they've gotten their money's worth. I think this flanking, sneaking tactic maneuver has been great. Uh, so if we go over everything they accomplished here, they... Took out the Voltigeurs. I forgot about that unit. Right at the beginning when they crossed over through the, the dip. They took out the Voltigeurs. Then they took out a cav unit. Took out artillery. And then another cav unit. So that's about four units they took out with using four of their own. But I know that seems like an even trade. But I feel like the four Prussians were much lesser than the four French units they took out. So I think actually the Prussians over here are going to be coming out uh, victorious. It's a nice, nice victory situation for them. And they softened up the young guard. Uh, not a ton. Uh, this one more so than the other. But yeah, they definitely softened them up. And uh, now, now all the focus is going to be over here. And now that the Prussians can uh, basically not have to worry about that other flank, they're going to be able to push forward here and uh, support this fight on this front. Uh, let's see what the French do about this cav. I love the fact that the Prussians are being so patient here. He's not trying to force anything. He's just waiting. He's patiently waiting uh, for a weak spot in the French army. Artil oh, there we go. There we go. The Jaegers have now have now decided to take on the Veltigers of the French. French not firing back. I wonder if he's out of range here. Do the Jaegers have better range? Or the Jaeger have better range than the Voltigeurs? 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 I don't know. I'm still working on my French, so... Still working on it. 
So he's now moving up his horse artillery. Love the fact that he has horse artillery. That's one of my favorite artillery because they're so fast moving and that you can really get them in some nasty positions. That was a weird, that was a weird <laughs> phrase there. Weird, weird word selection. But you get what I'm saying. You can get them in really good positions to destroy the enemy quickly. But I feel like this is, oh wait, what's this? There's a charge. Cav charge from the Lancers. From uh, the Prussians going into the French, but didn't really get anything out of that. And the sad thing is he's right by the red line. So even though these guys are routing, he might just lose them here. Let's see if they can recover right before. Come on, stop. Stop. For the Kaiser. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Ah, oh, that's the bad thing about fighting near the red line. Units that are breaking, well, they can easily be gone for good instead of coming back. So again, not sure what he was trying to accomplish there with that cav charge. The French were well aware of it. And uh, for the Prussians, uh, were not as successful as getting a surprise attack as they were over on this side. Uh, the young guard's still hanging out over here. Not sure what he's doing. Not sure what he's doing. I'd be sending all units. Maybe he's paranoid that there's another unit over here. That's probably the case. But, of course, we know there's nothing uh, because, well, there's nothing in the mini-map. So we know that there's nothing over there, but the French player might not know that. So the Prussians still taking a nice slow approach. This is exactly what you need to do in these types of situations because this is so well defended by the French that if you just move forward mindlessly, it's going to be, it's basically suicide for your army. I love the fact that he's, he's just kind of, He's dipping his toes in the water. He's also pushing heavy on this flank. Look at this. He's got three units here. Two of them uh, Prussian Fusiliers and one being a Jaeger. It's a pretty light force. Uh, they do have Cav support back here as well. So two Lancers. Also love the fact that he got Lancers. That's also another uh, favorite of my Cav type. Uh, because I just love charging in and destroying light units and, and artillery. We're very good flanking fire. He's got the high ground over here, and the French just kind of stood there. He didn't really maneuver and try to match the Prussians. He just kind of let this happen. I mean, I get it, you know, trying to go with the flow, uh, but you don't want to go with the flow like this. <laughs> just let it happen. Go with the flow. Not a good, Not a good situation. Also, remember, these Fusiliers have much longer range and here comes oh my god more Prussian uh, so the uh, the Jaegers have decided to protect the flank of the Fusiliers put down stakes very smart move so the Cav can no longer do a frontal charge at these Jaegers and the Jaegers are now holding back the French reinforcements who are going to try to support this fight over here which is a losing fight at the same time I'd be pushing up these troops I'd be I would be firing at these guys from multiple angles very good move. Oh, he's got another unit of line infantry. Check that out. Also, he's got his cav. They're moving in, guys. Really great tactics. I mean, this guy, he sends in the best, man. He sends in some great vanilla Napoleon gameplay. It's really awesome. They're great use of the Prussian Fusiliers. Just, I mean, the Polish Legion standing no chance here. He's got to get him out of there. He's down to 68 men. Uh, oh, no, they're breaking. They're breaking, and he's actually moving up the Voltigeurs, and he's got the land bear. He's probably going to just go straight into melee. No, he's going to just do an execution here. Boom! Oh, my God. What in the world? So, nice volley there. Should be able to easily... Yep, defeats them. And the French defenses are falling apart as the Prussians are just much more... I a, a, agile? Agile? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, brain fart. Uh, much more um, mobile. <laughs> mobile. <laughs> we'll go with that. They're much more mobile. And because of that, they're just flanking around the French defenses. Which is really great. Oh, he's going for another charge here. He's going to clean up these voltagers. Agile. That's the word I was looking for. He's being very agile. Nice charge. Great use with the land there. You know, honestly, guys, when I see land there, most of the time they're used as cannon fodder. Uh, but he's actually using them uh, very effectively in with decency and humanity. Not just sending these guys to their deaths. 
Yeah, he used them very wisely, taking out multiple uh, lights here. Uh, but he still has a long way to go. This battle's far from over. Got a nice artillery position with the French, which is really going to stop the Prussians in their tracks. Uh, it's a little awkward here. It looks like a little glitched out, but it should still fire. Yeah. Using canister shot. Landwehr still holding their ground. The heroes of today's battle, I swear, man. So, once again, Prussians have a fantastic position. He's got his Prussian Fusiliers, who just finished defeating the Polish, uh, Polish Legion. Now switching over to support this other front and just wreaking havoc. I mean, the, using these Prussian Fusiliers, uh, he's done a very great job of using their distance and causing the French to second guess here and causing, causing them to fall back. But he can't fall back forever because he'll leave his front line completely exposed uh, on the flank. So I got two units over here, foot guard and musketeers. The French moving up their units. I think they like this. I, you know, the fact that the land bear are close to breaking. But again, they are just land bear. And I certainly think he's gotten he's gotten his money worth out of the land bear. Without a doubt. Cav right around the flank. Let's not forget that there's still some French cav somewhere. I hear some yelling. Oh, there's the French cav, guys. Very depleted. Morale already low. He's got his lancers. Oh, and they break. The Prussian Fusiliers hold that line, man. So cool. Uh, so now they're moving around. The Lancers getting in the back of the army. The French are having to peel units back to defend the, the basically the rear guard here. Now, this was the Polish Legion that broke earlier. It's good to see that they have recovered and they're going to come back and support their French allies. Uh, back over here, uh, you know, it's just a disaster for the French. Because their flank is exposed, they've got to fall back. As much as I love this artillery position, it's useless with the flank exposed like this. And the Swiss foot are just getting chopped up into pieces here. They're becoming Swiss cheese. <laughs> Cringe. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're getting chewed up. They're getting chewed up here. I definitely think he needs to pull, He needs to retreat. He needs to give up this position. As good as it is, like I said, out, you know, it's just not working out. And the land is that oh no, these are musketeers. Is he giving the land a break? Oh, the land broke. But you know, you can't blame them. They played their part. Look at this. Point blank almost. This is one volley, they're gonna break them. Watch, ready? Oh, so close. So close. Okay, that was pretty much one volley. You got to give me that one. Come on. Swiss foot. Now crumbling. And they got... Oh, my God. The Prussian Cav way behind them. You got the general just like, Hold the line, man. Hold the line. And now the Prussians going for their artillery. Will they get a volley off? Yes, they do. But it, it kills a decent amount. But it's not enough to break them and that eight pounder foot artillery most oh wait are they're holding but a lot of the artillery getting destroyed here which is really unfortunate and now they're falling back here yeah they're falling back but did they, they didn't completely destroy the artillery the artillery crew i think he was worried about this unit breaking but the artillery crew might get a little revenge here no, hold your fire. There's a big hill in the way. Don't fire. Oh, man, that was good. I, I like that. I, I, I definitely think the Prussians can go in for the kill now. Oh, oh, he's got his artillery set up over here, too. Not the greatest of spots. You can see he just hit the dirt instantly in front of him. Lots of trees in the way. The terrain is a little awkward. But, you know, honestly, guys, I don't even think he needs that artillery. I think if he just keeps... Look at this. Oh, pushing on this flank as well. I think if he just keeps putting pressure on the flank, he, sh he should have a good chance of winning this battle. Uh, for the French, on the other hand, I think the French need to get aggressive in certain parts of the battle. Like down here, I think he should get aggressive. Take out these Prussian units. Regroup. Consolidate. Consolidate. <laughs> you ever see that Waterloo movie made in the 70s? Uh, it's just such a quotable movie. Uh, at the beginning, you know, after he loses the battle, uh, where 
the first kind of surrender, you know, the first time Napoleon gets exiled. Um, but he doesn't want to surrender, and he's like, oh, he's like, we can recruit, we can train the men on the go. We'll consolidate, consolidate. It's just so awesome. Anyways, <laughs> you got to see that movie. Waterloo, 1970 uh, is when it came out. So, good stuff. Anyways, also when he's like, I will not, not, not. All right. <laughs> Because his, uh, his marshals want him to surrender. Okay, so <laughs> I'm just cheesing over that movie. Uh, the, the Musketeers holding their line here. Got a pretty decent angle to the enemy. A little awkward with the train, but they should get some, some headshots here. Uh, of course, we've got the Musketeers on the flank firing. Trying to get these guys to break as quickly as possible. Now the French, I mean, charge in the general. Do something. Don't let your units get surrounded like this. Uh-oh. I hear some yelling. We got some Voltigeurs hiding in the trees. And now the Prussians going in for a charge. Voltigeur is just standing clueless. Once again, the French are just getting chewed up piece by piece. It's not looking great for them, guys. It's not looking great. I mean, now's the time, Prussia. To move in all your forces. Uh, you know, I kind of like the fact that he has reserves. I mean, I don't think it's necessary. I think he could just move in everybody and quickly win this. Oh, wait. Nice charge. He's going to finish off the, uh, what are these, young guard. Nice move there by the uh, the Cav. And now we've got a counter charge by the Polish Legion seeking revenge. But they've got an uphill battle, quite literally. Let's see. Oh, but oh, that was kind of cool. This French soldier's like, retreat, la retreat. <laughs> and now, oh, now the cab's going to get out of there. Oh, they're going for the general, guys. They're going for the head of the serpent. And the general's trying to escape, but he's just not going to be fast enough against these lancers. And he's most likely going to kill or capture the general. And the French army is down to their last unit. There goes the general. He has been killed. And this is it. The young guard make their stand. You want to be old guard? Well, you should probably run then. <laughs> Forming square. I like it. Square pretty good against a charging unit. There you go, guys. That's going to be the battle. So, it wasn't the closest of battles, but nonetheless, I really enjoyed the tactics from the Prussian player. So, uh, Jesse, thank you so much for um, the battle replay. Uh, you can look at his kills. 162, the Pru yeah, Pru no doubt, Prussian Fusiliers, heroes of today. Also, the Landwehr, very impressed on how he used the Landwehr. Uh, they got a lot done as well. So, this is a great example of why you should never only rely on being a defensive player. When you're too defensive, you think you're safe on your little defensive hill. But the Prussian player just was, he showed a great reason why hill, like camping a hill is not always the best. Because you're not as mobile. And the Prussian player was much more mobile. And because of that, he was able to flank around the um, the French forces and just obliterate them piece by piece. So, great game to both players. Don't want to take anything away from the French player. He put up a good fight. Uh, and I'm sure he learned a lot in this engagement. Uh, really great battles all over the place. Uh, so, that's going to wrap it up for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on the battlefield. It was a lot of fun. And I will see you next time.